So now we're back again for night hacking, uh, live from Java land. And we have a new guest, uh, Oleg Shalaif. So very welcome. And yeah, what do you want to talk about? Uh, hi, Sebastian. Really happy to be here. Uh, let's talk about uh, the JVM languages. So I have a session upcoming in the next hour okay. at 2 p.m. If you are at so Java land, hurry. <laughs> if you are at Java land, visit, I think it's room one to one and two at 2 p.m. And we're going to talk about how you can build your own JVM language. Oh, wow. OK. I don't, intend, like, I don't think this session will be practically applicable for many people. Unless you're writing DSLs for a living, then probably you wouldn't use that. Yes. But it, there is something about programming languages being the very basic and the base of our tools. So we, we use different ones. We kind of hate all of those. <laughs> uh, all of them have their quirks, and very often we forget how hard it is to create a language that people will actually use and, and that would be general enough to be applicable everywhere, but yes. specific enough to be uh, not that verbose. So look at the balance, what makes sense. Yes, and in this session, what we're going to do, we're going to look at Graal, which is the state-of-the-art mm -hmm. compiler which will hopefully, in, at some point of time, be incorporated into the OpenJDK. Uh, and we'll look at the Truffle, which is the framework for creating managed languages. So with those two guys, it's fairly easy to, and with some additional tooling, fairly easy to create a small language that will run on top of the JVM. Okay, and wow. we'll look at how Truffle implements the abstract syntax trees, mm -hmm. how to convert a simple like cal calculator with some types and some additional uh, expression, expression, how to convert that to work on top of the truffle. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see through some code. We'll see how it executes, uh, a bit about type conversions, a bit about specialization, how truffle and Graal make an efficient, efficient pair of tools to create cool languages. Mm -hmm. Uh, and as a result, what I would like to, to the audience to, uh, to, to get from that is first to, to know that there are tools like Graal and Truffle, mm -hmm. and maybe to get into looking at them, or at least store that information somewhere in the back of their brains. And when they need that, they will be like, oh, yeah, there is a thing for that. Yeah. And second, uh, implementing language is kind of, uh, it's, a, it's a hard challenge, especially mm -hmm. if you have like a working solution and you need to evolve the language that you have. Yes, I think that's the hardest part, right? And how to break or not break things. Appreciating appreciating the things that we have as a Java community. So yes. we get we get the state of the art runtime platform. We get a reasonably modern language. We have this, this amazing and actually working process of how the language evolves. But still we are we're kinda sad about things not getting into earlier versions of the language or about things getting too long or about lack of certain things. W which is kind of unfair if you really appreciate all those facts, right? Uh -huh. That we have in the platform. Yeah, so we have the amazing things. We still kind of complain about not having more things. <laughs> we <laughs> all want Java to cater specifically for our use case. Yeah. So when you are doing like low latency applications, right. you would be like, oh, you know what? I really need no pass garbage collector and I need it right now. Yeah. Or you're like, I need value types. Or if you when, you, when you do, I don't know, libraries and you want something, you're like, you know what? I'm using unsafe and I'm gonna continue to use unsafe. Yes. So wh even when you implement like a toy language, it gives you an idea that almost everything in the language design is a trade-off. And depending on mm -hmm. what you choose in that trade-off, you'll, you'll get different outcomes. Yeah. So it's a very careful balance between things. And hopefully, hopefully my session will inspire at least some people to appreciate the challenges mm -hmm. and appreciate the Java platform as it is a bit more. Wow. Yeah. That sounds really, sounds really interesting. So everybody interested in that topic, uh, recommend to go to Oleg's session. <laughs> Uh, All right, can we have uh, just a very b a briefly um, look at what, what is it roughly about to, uh, to implement, wha what it takes to implement a JVM language? That's, that, that's, that's definitely, we can look at that. So when you download Graal and Truffle, I think uh, it comes with, let me just make it full screen. Yeah, a little uh, bigger maybe the font size. Uh, yes. There is a presentation mode, which is a wonderful thing in the idea. 
So it comes with an example language called the simple language, which is actually totally not that simple. So it comes with all the features. It comes with the functions. It comes when interrupt with all the other languages. Mm -hmm. uh, it showcases the abilities of Truffle mm -hmm. and Graal together. But because there is a quite a mature project, actually, there are many of those. So mm -hmm. you look at all those things, and you get kind of confused and maybe a little bit overwhelmed about where to start from. Where to start, yeah. So we'll start with a simple, uh, with a simpler. Uh, Even simpler language. <laughs> yeah, we start with a calculator. Let me just find the grammar. How do I find the grammar? So we'll define a grammar for the calculator that consists of expressions, that consists of evaluating expressions on a different thread, that consists of uh, different kinds of numbers, so integers and numbers containing mm -hmm. dots, which are floating points, yeah. and some operations. So fairly simple. We'll, we'll go through the code that uh, that parses this Antelar tree and generates the nodes in the Truffle API. So basically, Truffle offers you an API to describe the abstract syntax tree of your, yes. of your language. So for example, let's show the simplest example. Uh, you just create a node mm -hmm. for holding the long value. And if you look at the language uh, uh, through the superclass uh, hierarchy, you'll see that it's, it's full of truffle annotations. Mm -hmm. So this is how you basically uh, implement your AST. You just use some truffle API and a bunch of annotations, and you implement for every node in your AST, you implement uh, a class. And after that, you create your AST in terms of truffle, mm -hmm. and you say, please now evaluate this. Okay, and, and that is all generated by the framework. So you you define the grammar, and then the um, nodes uh, of the ASTs are generated. Nodes of the AST are not generated. So because you define the grammar, uh -huh. and uh, you get from Antelar, you get the parser, yeah, so, uh, lexer and the parser. Yes. So you can convert uh, the stream, or you convert your source files into uh, a tree yeah. of sorts. But you need still to define the semantics of what. What the okay, yeah, what the tokens in that three uh, specify? So, for example, you can have a plus to mean an addition, or you can have a plus to mean something something right. different. So, so you will have to create the the, the nodes for the operations that you have, but it, they're fairly simple. So, for the calculator, you will get the mathematical operations, and 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 some support classes. The greatest thing is. The the best thing is that you never start something from scratch, mm -hmm. right? But what you do, you just Google stuff and then you copy the minimal working example from yeah. Stack Overflow <laughs> here. So hopefully, hopefully this calculator language, because you will probably use mass in your in your language anyway, yes. unless you are very esoteric. So this could could be a very minimal example, and then you yeah, add I would say so. you you add functions. And you can build like a small lab lambda calculus out of that. Right, and then you right, add and other types and so on and so forth. Yeah, you add the object orientation, you add message passing there, you add concurrency controls, mm -hmm. more advanced that just like running things on a background thread. <laughs> but you start with a very simple, simple, simple thing. And for example, and Truffle helps you quite a bit with all the glue code that you will, mm -hmm. will have. So for example, if we look at the addition node, uh, so we would like our plus operation to be okay, yeah. working on the longs, which we have, and big decimals, which we have. So we'll have two types, lang types in our language. So you just specify the methods, and you say what you're going to do. You just add a truffle annotation for the specialization, and truffle will know to pick the fast pass first. Okay. And then, and then if not, to back off into the uh, other implementations. And then, so for big decimals, if nothing helps, mm -hmm. then we just go into this manual conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a way to do implicit type conversions with Truffle. And in general, the whole types, uh, types, the whole types are just an abstract class with more mm -hmm. annotations. And you can fit uh, implicit conversions here, and it's fairly simple okay. to do. 
So that sounds uh, like it's uh, quite advanced to, to so implement with, with this yeah, framework. It's a very advanced framework, and you can do a lot of things. And there are multiple implementations of actual languages. Mm -hmm. So you can run Ruby on Truffle, uh, so JRuby. And I think that implementation uh, passes either like 100% of the Ruby JRuby spec tests mm -hmm. or like 98 or something. My information might be outdated. Don't, don't uh, kind of make business decisions yeah. based on that. Safe harbor and <laughs> the all that. Safe harbor statement. There is a JavaScript implementations. JavaScript implementations. Uh -huh. There are R implementation on, on, on that. And if you look at that, so this is the slide that I've taken from the last year uh, paper about Truffle. So if you look at the performance, the higher bar is better. Wow. So Ruby is JRuby on Truffle is quite efficient. R, which is the language that mathematics data and statistics, and data yeah, science yeah. is used, R is amazingly fast. Wow, that's uh, impressive. JavaScript. So if you look at the JavaScript here, it's almost as fast. I think the best specialized competition is V8. V8, yeah, I guess so. So if it runs at uh, 0 0.9 performance of V8, that's it's not bad. Yeah, not that's bad. That's impressive as well. Uh, Java, surprisingly, also is almost on par with Hotspot. So mm -hmm. the whole system works. If you really know what you're doing, you can implement full-blown programming mm -hmm. languages with that. Obviously, it will be much harder and larger code base than uh, any toy language that sure. you have. But you have to start somewhere. And you don't have to dive in it and like figure out all the features. Uh, but you can start with simple things and maybe more explicit mm -hmm. things and then use more and more of the features as as you need them. Yeah. So and this is what we're gonna look at at the session today. Wow. It sounds sounds like a really interesting topic and yeah, also to make the awareness I, I I like this idea that you make the awareness what the JVM platform already does for you, as in today, what the JVM language gives you just for free. And yeah, that's that's great. Great to yeah, see. Yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a very interesting uh, one. Uh, I've had some mixed f feedback for this, and I think mm -hmm. it depends largely on what people expect when they come into the session. Uh huh. Uh, but yeah, uh, typically, typically there are at least several people in the audience who are like, "Oh, this is really cool," and I I like that a lot. That's why yeah. I, I like the session because. This is not something that many other people talk about. Mm -hmm. So it's, if you look at any conference schedule, it's Java 9 modules, modules, modules. Right. Uh, or, I don't know, uh, frameworks or, like or libraries or microservices or uh, Docker or uh, like containers in general. And those are very interesting and very useful topics because this is, they solve the problems that you actually will have like in your day-to-day -day job. Right. Right. But a little bit something inspirational. I think it's it's That's it's true. always good to have. So hopefully I'll see you all in 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 that session. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for sharing. Is there anything um, else you want to add for the live audience? Maybe for the people who do not attend the the Javaland conference. Well, you definitely should attend <laughs> the Javaland conference. It's one of the most unique and interesting conferences that I've been to, uh, and I'm here the second year in a row. And I think it's uh, it only gets better, so yeah. definitely so check, like check uh, it out. Thanks a lot for sharing this and for the live audience. Thanks a lot for watching. You're welcome. Thank Bye. you.